I sold my Royal Enfield Himalayan. It wasn't easy, but I don't regret it. Let me tell you why. As some of you know, it was just at the end of September 2021 that I bought my Himalayan or Himalayan. I know how you guys pronounce it. It was a huge milestone for me to be able to afford my first big bike, meaning 400cc and up in the Philippines, which makes it highway legal. For that reason, it was really special to me. It was the only big bike I could afford that also checked all the boxes for me. Adventure touring ability, rugged good looks, character, and ease of maintenance. I saw it as the perfect platform for outgrowing my scooter and becoming a better rider. In the four short months I owned it, I went on some epic rides, some of which I haven't even had time to edit yet. If you watch the vlogs, you'll know I enjoyed every minute of riding it, especially when the roads got rough. So why did I sell it? Well, life is short. If you're gonna own a bike for pleasure, you may as well get the one you really want. The one that really fits your personality and your riding style and your riding goals, assuming you can afford it. And in the course of my rides with the Himalayan, and especially in watching my friends ride their bikes, I really came to realize that the kinds of rides I did and my personality and my goals, they don't really require the unique and special qualities of the Royal Enfield Himalayan. I do tours that cover mostly roads with occasional bits of light to moderate off-roading. As many of you know, the Himalayan truly shines as a beginner-friendly kind of oversized dual sport as it can really tractor through almost any terrain even if you're not an expert dirt rider. A capable rider can take on really gnarly stuff with this bike. At some point, I'd like to try that too, but on a light bike. What I've come to understand is that the kind of off-road riding the Himalayan is built to handle is not mainly what I look for in my rides. I ride to travel and see sights, which in this country involves a lot of going off the pavement. But those who really love to ride off-road, whether on dedicated dirt bikes or adventure bikes like the Himalayan or the Yamaha T7, are in it to pursue something else. They're pursuing an extreme sport. Suffering is kind of the point to face obstacles and overcome challenges. While I look for a little bit of that to spice up my riding, to test my skill and mental toughness, and to sweeten the reward of the view at the end, it's not my main goal in riding to experience that. Which is all to say, I wanted a bike that's more fun on the road, that has a higher smiles per mile factor. If you've ever ridden a Himalayan, you know that its principal shortcoming is the absence of that twist the throttle, smile inside your helmet acceleration. Along with that is the lack of agility because of that big, obstacle-eating 21-inch front wheel. Moreover, safety-wise, it's good to have that overtaking power because of all the traffic on national roads in this country. In short, I was willing to trade the Himalayan's all-terrain reassurance for a bike that's a bit more fun, a bit more handsome, and a more welcoming platform for customization, but without losing that pure riding character that people love about Royal Enfield motorcycles. Now here's the thing. If I had the money and the garage space, I would have kept the Himalayan, full stop. There's a reason this is one of the most beloved bikes on the internet, and it's not just all of you fans from India. Hello, by the way, I see you commenting, and I appreciate you. The Himalayan is the truly affordable adventure bike that can take you anywhere, even if you're a beginner or feel that you're too old to ride hard. Its combination of friendly power, abundant torque, accessible seat height, and comfortable ride make it an unbeatable, off-road biased adventurer at its price. Not only of itchy boots nearly covered two continents on this. Who can argue with that? In the Philippines, riders call it the Pambansang ADV, meaning the National Adventure Bike. Like India and many other developing countries, we actually kind of need adventure bikes to deal with many of our so-called regular roads, and we need them cheap. Moreover, in countries like ours, 400cc is plenty big for a motorcycle, and the Himalayan is just big enough for most of us. But alas, money and garage space are limited. And the day I made the decision to go for the bike I really wanted, I put the Himalayan up for sale. It was gone in less than 24 hours. A testament to really how well liked this bike is. It was sad to see the Himalayan go, but I'm excited for all the new possibilities my next bike will open up. It's not gonna be an adventure bike, but that doesn't mean I'll stop adventuring. With a lot of practice, some judicious mods, and a lot of help from my more experienced friends, I should be able to do all the off-road playing I like. 
with a bit more effort, but with a bit more style too. So I'm sure you're wondering, what did I get? There she is. So I hope you still stay locked into my channel to see my upcoming adventures and more content with the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. Yet another beloved bike from Royal Enfield. I'm telling you, I've owned this thing for just over a week, but I am so happy with my decision. It's so smooth and relaxed, but with just enough power to have fun, and it looks so good while doing it. I will be slowly turning this into a scrambler, so expect content on that build as I save up and find just the right components over time. All right, I hope you still enjoyed this video, even if you might be sad that I sold the Himalayan. Hit like if you did, it really helps, and stay subscribed because there is so much more great content to come from adventures to builds, video essays like this, and the like. Thanks for watching. Peace out.